Hi, my name is Brian Casper. I'm from Intel Corporation, and uh, today I'm going to be discussing wireline and optical communication link scaling. A survey of digital communication needs can be represented by uh, the pyramid that I show here. Uh, that represents, the for at least data center applications, the number of links here on the left side, labeled on the left side, uh, over a given period of time versus uh, the reach or distance that those corresponding links have to stretch uh, for an application. Now for data center, there might be intra data center communication as designated here long haul versus rack to rack or box to box, which be in the several meters range or even a board to board or chip to chip all the way down to uh, MCM or multi-chip module type communications, which would more likely be in the millimeter way at range distance. Over the years, there has been uh, tension or debate between uh, do we use electrical link or an optical link uh, for a given distance? And that's represented here in the right-hand graph where, generally speaking, electrical links are used for shorter distances, meter level or less, where optical links, at least over the last several decades, have been used for longer distances. And depending on circumstances or applications, there will be a crossover point between electrical and optical, indicated by the vertical uh, bar in this particular chart. At the turn of the century, a decade and a half ago, there was quite a bit of debate on or concern regarding electrical links, and would there be would uh, would there be ability for electrical links to for chip to chip applications to be scaling beyond a gigabit per second? And uh, these two quotes I have here, which were uh, widely distributed, incredible uh, articles. Uh, we're indicating some concerns, uh, grave concerns, with 10 gigabits per second electrical link rates and above. At the same time there was that electrical pessimism uh, 10 to 20 years ago, there was a significant amount of optimism with respect to optical communications links. And uh, this is one example of that, uh, of a representation of that optimism uh, in a, an article uh, that was uh, widely distributed regarding predictions on which uh, when optical would take over electrical links, both with inside the box of a computer box or even within the same PC, PC board. And uh, now uh, these predictions it didn't come to pass as quickly as many would, uh, would like to see. And there's a few different reasons for that. One is demonstrated here in that what was perceived as the limit on electrical actually wasn't. There's many technologies that have been developed by researchers and developers over the last several years that have been able to push beyond the 3D bandwidth of uh, traditional electrical channels and even take those channels and improve them and optimize them and model them in such a way that we could extend the, the, uh, the data rates from a few gigabits per second at that time to now we are seeing uh, data rates being demonstrated, uh, full link electrical links being demonstrated at, at over 100 gigabits per second. Now we're not yet approaching the electrical theoretical limit as defined by Shannon's capacity theorem. But in many cases, I would consider we are approaching close to a practical limit based on power constraints, cost constraints, and other things that uh, limit us being able to push the data rate distance even farther. I think it's useful to represent electrical link practical limits, or at least uh, my perspective of these, based on, uh, this was produced based on a uh, amalgamation of simulation as well as measurements and using a reasonable or a power limited amount of equalization and signal processing to overcome the channel effects as well as using a reasonable amount of cost additives to improve the behavior of the channel. And in this case, I've separated in two key classes of channels, one that is primarily cable-based or twin-ax or coax-based versus a PCB or a PC board-based channel um, uh, and labeled it backplane. 
And in these cases, I like to refer to it as a rate distance product limitation or uh, sometimes called a bandwidth distance product. And in, in that case, generally we see a 50 to 100 gigabits per second meter type of distance, meaning uh, if it's necessary to double the data rate, the distance, uh, the reachable distance may be cut in approximately half for a constant uh, rate distance product uh, number. And uh, what we've seen throughout the industry is, uh, and including over the last few years, we've seen all these data rates, although um, up to, uh, well, and, and slightly exceeding 100 gigabits per second, uh, being demonstrated. At this point, uh, I believe in a few years time, uh, going forward, we're going to see 200 gigabit per second electrical links demonstrated. Now, even though um, electrical link scaling will continue, there is that rate distance uh, product limitation. And uh, that's, that's represented, at least qualitatively, uh, by this polygon uh, where uh, we won't be able to push the data rate significantly higher with no technology at this point. Other than there is, uh, there are a few ways to get past this limitation, one of which are uh, electrical repeaters or retimers um, that break up the link in multiple segments. However, that comes with the cost of power. Um, if uh, it's important to extend that link to uh, twice the distance, then the power costs and the overall money costs will double uh, to first order. Optical has had this had a limitation in the past and continues this limitation in, associated with cost and power. Cost is usually referred to a, a metric as dollars um, or money per gigabits per second and uh, power in terms of picojoules per bit or milliwatts per gigabit per second. And that's common to refer to uh, in terms of US dollars. Uh, optical has been constrained to, uh, in many cases, well above a dollar per gigabit per second versus electrical links may in many cases be uh, pennies per gigabit per second, significantly less, especially if it's a short distance. In some cases, in short distance, it can be sub pennies per gigabit per second. And as well as the power limitation, one of the power limitations emanates from the fact that uh, all optical links uh, that have to interface with core, a core IC, whether it's a CPU, FPGA, switch, a GPU, need to have a little jumper electrical link to that corresponding optical module. And those optics have not been fully integrated into that core IC silicon. So really practical optical links that we see nowadays are not just an optical link, but two electrical links uh, that uh, bookend uh, that, that entire optical link. And that adds to the power and cost as well. So this leaves us a gap. Uh, this gap is, uh, is something that is very critical, at least for the data center market. As we push up data rate, many, maybe even most of our bandwidth needs sit right in this gap and can't be provided by current technology or it can't be filled by current technology. Hence the promise of optical and specifically silicon photonics is a very promising technology to dramatically lower the cost of optical components uh, going forward. And it combines the great uh, promise of optical communications and almost unlimited bandwidth of the optical fiber and the, and the components and mixing that with modern silicon manufacturing technology, uh, what is commonly used in CMOS fabs, to pattern optical devices, whether it be modulators, waveguides, uh, photo detectors, and so forth, on that silicon in a low cost manner and very small so that that can be uh, deployed in very large volumes and pull the cost down dramatically.
I'll give you an example of a very interesting photonic device. Uh, now this has been uh, around for many decades, but only recently has been utilized for uh, very high bandwidths and uh, demonstrated to potentially be deployed in large volumes. Uh, this is referred to as a ring resonator modulator or ring modulator. And the concept of an optical signal on a silicon photonics wafer uh, being routed through what is referred to here as the bus waveguide. And some of that optical signal is coupled into this ring. And uh, it, uh, as it circulates through the ring, there is a given round trip delay. And if that round trip delay results in constructive interference, it translates into a one or maximum power at the output of the bus waveguide. And if this ring delay translates into destructive interference when this round trip signal mixes or adds to the bus waveguide, then that translates into a zero. And this round trip delay can be controlled through electrical means, uh, basically via adjacent circuitry on the same silicon wafer or through a, a heterogeneous uh, integration solution where uh, we couple either through flip chip bonding or a wire bond uh, from the CMOS chip or other circuits to uh, to be able to uh, contact the modulator junctions that effectively changes that round trip delay. And much uh, great advancements uh, have been done uh, over the years, whereas now we've recently seen uh, examples of these, these types of devices, which are very small in the few microns to tens of microns range, operating at very low power and uh, very good inefficiency past 100 gigabits per second per wavelength. Closing the gap, I think there is some, a little bit of a potential in electrical to close this, this electrical optical gap that has arisen as performance has scaled over the years. But it appears that there's great potential with uh, silicon photonics techniques and other optical techniques that are applicable as well, especially when symbol rates increase and uh, techniques such as wavelength division multiplexing, polarization division multiplexing, and coherent links are utilized and are, are a very natural fit for silicon photonics uh, techniques. If we can close this cap, and do it with very good energy efficiency and uh, very good power, then um, there will be a time when it mitigates that the, the issues caused by uh, some electrical scaling, practical electrical scaling limits. Now in summary, the uh, electrical-based wireline data rates, uh, yes, will continue to advance even to 200 gigabits per second and maybe even beyond, but we'll, what will retract is the distances associated with those very high data rates. And now in the past, optical cost, power, uh, temperature sensitivities associated with those devices, as well as size have been great adoption limiters. But many of those problems are being focused on uh, at this point and that that uh, distance of which we can have very cost and power effective optical links will shrink to help fill that gap in the future.